Hello everyone, Attack Power here with another How to Build the Divisions video here with 3rd US Armored. Let's dive right in here to a division that at least one person in the comments has been persistently asking that I'd be able to do a deck building video on. And the thing is, we have seen this division quite a lot recently in League and other tournaments. So 3rd uh, US Armored, definitely an interesting one. Pretty unique, honestly. Uh, there's not a whole ton of Western Allied Armored divisions to start, and this one is definitely one of the more interesting ones. It's a solid division. There's really, there's definitely some very big issues with it, um, but it definitely, in the hands of certain players, seems very, very strong. Would I suggest this division to a newbie? No, definitely not. Um, there are definitely things to, to work around in this deck that are that's really tough for a, new, a newer player, without a doubt. Uh, that does not mean the division's bad. It's just one of those divisions that has some very distinct strengths, and you really need to play into those strengths, and if you don't, it's very easy to, to destroy this deck. Uh, but it, if you do play into those strengths, you can absolutely dominate a lot of divisions in the game using units in this deck. Um, so, yeah, it's definitely a Vanguard Maverick deck. You do not have the depth of several tabs to go long in, like, a balanced or B for victory or any sort of long income at all. So it's, it's definitely a Vanguard or Maverick build. Uh, we're going Maverick here because I, I personally just think Maverick is the better... Uh, Point-wise, you know, you just get more at the end of the day. Uh, so I find Maverick to be scarier than Vanguard, generally speaking. So diving in here, though, to the Recon tab, and, and I'm going to try to note when there are other options. I mean, there's lots of options in this deck. This deck is pretty flexible build-wise. I've looked through a couple of other people's builds of it. I don't play it very much myself, but we have seen a lot of top-tier players play it. So it is very flexible. Diving in here into the Recon tab, 50 cal Jeep, never. Uh, you do want some sort of infantry recon um honestly the scouts here are usually i hate this sort of unit uh but since all the weapons are pretty close range it's actually not so bad but you only get three and you're forced single vet and they cost 20 points instead of 15 points and getting four of them so i mean the recon basically wins out because of those reasons uh your other options are then just stewards and m8s now the stewards I feel are a little redundant in this deck because you just have so many tanks otherwise uh, adding this light tank on top of it just I, I feel is unnecessary it doesn't mean you can't though you, I would definitely not hate on anyone switching out one of these M8 cards for you know the recon card for the M5A1 steward here and like vetting this a little lower so you still get a good number of m8s but the truth is uh, a really strong opening strategy for this deck is to rush with some m8s um so having these double vetted early having two cards in a phase does give you plenty of them and so they perform the best they can i find m8s to be terrifying m8s are so good uh for their price they they really trade up super often they're super fast they have radio on top of it all uh very high optics it, it's just a very good unit so I, I would be remiss not to play this unit. Uh, but yeah, I, I you could definitely swap out uh, an M8 for a Stuart Recon if you want more of those light tanks. So the infantry tab, one of the big issues with this deck. Um, the, the the slot caught the slot the tab is obviously terrible. You'll only get five, which is horrible. Uh forcing you to basically unvet basically everything if you want to have any number of infantry. Like this is 72, which for this deck's actually quite high. Uh, I could probably do a little bit of vetting. You know, I could probably put a bit of vet on these armored rifles here and uh, maybe a little bit of vet on these LMGs. Uh, brings it down to 63, which is a pretty average number for this division, at least based on what I've seen other people doing. Um, so the, 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 the special thing with this division, though, is that all the infantry are coming in with half tracks of some sort. Now, you can bring them in free half tracks. There are free ones, the M2 half half track here but of course has no weapon then your your real options are the m3 half track and the m3a1 one having a 30 cal and the other having a 50 cal the 50 cal is of course significantly better but it is uh 15 points i believe uh for that half track yes and this one is only five so you have to balance the punishment of price uh when taking these infantry now these infantry are super cheap otherwise like when you actually look at the prices 25 or 20 points is, is really quite good for these infantry uh, the, the thing is, though, you're generally bringing them in with a half track. Uh, now, you could, you know, say C phase here, instead of these tw being 25 points, I could bring them in the M2s, and they'd only be 20 points. Um, that's definitely a very real option, but these guys 
aren't like incredible damage output. So what really helps them out is having that half track there to support those units. And that's one of the that's one of the skills in third U.S. armor that you have to master and the is the usage of your half tracks. You have to be constantly using them. They have to be basically another infantry squad that you're working with on the map. You can't be letting them sit around doing nothing. You have to use them actively or your infantry are going to lose fights. They're not bad infantry but they're definitely not standing up to this super strong infantry meta and the divisions, the many divisions around now that are just sporting like absolute elite infantry all the time. Uh, the way this division stacks up to those in any way is by using its half tracks, like aggressively, uh, keeping them in the fight, being willing to lose a few to Panzer Shreks and things like that so that you have that support there all the time. Uh, in terms of this build though, uh, I'm putting the armored LMG rifles in a phase here with one vet. Uh, these are the only ones with two machine guns, so they are kind of important for holding down the fort. Uh, then bringing in a card of engineers. A lot of times I'll just see people bring more armored rifles in here. That is absolutely an option. Uh, uh, you could switch this out, but this division suffers from CQC problems to start. So for me personally, bringing in even less engineers is not ideal. Although truthfully, depending on the fight, you might just want to consider you know you're not going to win the forest fights like at the end of the day you definitely won't against any division with some sort of significant cqc power which is a lot of divisions these days um so the option is to just say screw it and not bring a card of engineer you really want one card you need at least one but you know you could do scrap the second and take the armored rifles with the bazooka and stuff if you feel that's necessary or if you know you're playing a division with a lot of armor so B phase, your armored rifles, BAR, these are like your only really good, good troops. Um, you know, they're not like phenomenally good, but they are very good for 25 points. Uh, a lot of the points is just going into this bazooka here. Otherwise, like if you take this bazooka off, it's just a pretty average rifle squad with the BAR. So it's not anything like out of this world. Engineers again and C phase, just those armored rifles for that constant fight. You could also put your armored rifles in C, but I, I want to have the push power in B. We're, of course, in Maverick. So, yeah, and there's really no room for any sort of leader uh, that that is definitely pushing your luck. I think in this division is getting one of these leaders because also your tank tech has plenty. So this, of course, the highlight, the focus of this division, the armor tab, some great options here uh, that can really punch you through really allows this division to punch pretty hard uh, against a lot of different divisions. So a phase here, we're bringing the stewards mostly for their commandiness, 30 points for a command tank here. Really nice. Uh, you could just bring a normal card of them, but I, you don't, you don't need stewards. Like you just don't, they're not very good. The gun fires really, really slowly uh, for a gun of this sort of caliber and stuff. Uh, the three Brownings is nice. They definitely put out a lot of suppression, but it, it's not like, I, I don't know. I just don't feel like dedicating a whole slot to that. Uh, also here in A phase, the M4A1, just the normal one. Now, these are not great. I don't love them. Uh, the vet curve kind of stinks. The 642 is unfortunate going all the way. If it was three, I would definitely double vet, but two is a little low. Um, you can't get these uh, Shermans until B phase. So we have the M4A3 75W here, which basically has 10 millimeters more armor, costs 10 more points. Um, that's, and it's a little faster. Those are the main, those are the statistical differences. I, I don't know if there's more secret differences to between these two tanks. Feel free to let me know in the comments. Does the M4A3, does, does the turret turn faster? Does it, does it like aim faster because of stabilizers or some other, you know, thing that we can't see here in the stats? Um, but yeah, basically these are definitely better. That extra 10 millimeters of armor is a pretty big deal. The difference between like the difference between 90 and 100 millimeters of armor, I think is probably the most significant difference in armor in the game. Um, like a lot of other armor jumps don't make as big of a difference. So like say 70 to 80, 70 to 80 doesn't really affect as much because most guns in the game pen 90, uh, like the medium tanks you can see right here, the Sherman. So you're still penetrating 70 or 80 millimeters. Of course it gets easier as you get, you know, have less armor, but that difference between 90 and hundred means now all of a sudden a lot less medium tanks are able to consistently penetrate you at closer ranges. So you know, that extra 10 millimeters of armor does make a big difference for this tank. Uh, and then finally, last card here in A is the M4A176, which is a lovely, lovely little tank here. Only 85 points. You get 130 millimeters of penetration. Your normal Sherman statistics outside of that. Uh, this is a very solid unit. This is what I always want all Shermans to be when I'm using them because it actually kills the tanks. It, it, it eviscerates infantry just the same as the normal Sherman does. Uh, this thing really 
is the whole package, this unit right here. A very, very good unit. Moving into B-Phase, we have now the M4A3s, of course, another card of the M4A176s, uh, and then I have a leader card of the M4A176s so that I have all of the all the M4A76s I could get. Uh, and then the vaunted, terrifying Jumbo Wumbo Tank of Doom here. Uh, 140 points, the good old 190 millimeters of armor. Th these stats don't matter, which is, which is why you don't vet this unit. Um, it, it's literally just there to sit and tank, ironically enough, tank shots. It's, it's not meant to kill things. I mean, it will. It's not like it can't, but it, it, that's, this is not what it's here for, which is why I don't vet it. I don't see any reason to vet this unit. You're, the point is for this thing to suck up rounds and suck up enemy, enemy ammunition and time and energy and block up a whole portion of the map using this unit. It's very, very strong for 140 points. It's very, very cost efficient. Now, the question then is why am I not bringing an A and B phase card of them? Truthfully, in A phase, it, it that is still expensive in A phase. I'm also like, I don't often fall into find myself in situations where I feel like a jumbo is the right answer in a phase uh, there's some other answer usually uh, to solve your problems so the jumbos coming in B I would not fault anyone for bringing the a and B phase card of jumbo wumbos but I think you can get by without it C phase we are just bringing one card of m4 a threes here to close things out there in C phase so great take tab I mean anytime you can take the m4 a3 over the m4 a1 you should it just is better um yeah there we go support tab really good support tab this there's really you want for nothing here uh flamethrowers i definitely would take them they come in the nice zippy jeeps uh you really can actually you can bring them in the four gpas that's what you should bring them in excuse me these have uh five kilometers an hour faster speed it's one of the fastest units in the game so definitely bring them in it with that uh the GPA here. Then, of course, the terrifying 50 caliber machine gun. Absolutely crushing. This thing is wonderful. I would almost try to fit two of them in there, uh, but I couldn't find the space, but that's okay. Uh, then you have two cards of 2K Sherman firepower. Uh, one just has more armor? Wait, this is really confusing. Why does the cheaper one... Why does the cheaper one have better armor? Wait, I'm so confused. Is there some statistic I'm missing here? Oh, yeah, it fires slower. Oh, I see it now. I see it now. I see it now. Okay, this one just has the 4.1, five rounds a minute. Uh, so it's a little bit weaker gun, while this one has the... Uh, what? Wait, what? It didn't change. There we go. There we go. Okay, okay, now we got it. Okay, so this one has the, the technically worse gun. Fires a little slower, only has HE rounds, but it has higher armor. And this one has the heat shells, which is definitely nice. And the, oh no, it fires the same speed. It just has the heat shells, excuse me. Uh, less armor, but does come with heat. So just depends on which way you want to go. I mean, this one only comes in B. So you're kind of forced if you want one in A to bring in this one. Now, if you don't feel like you need this much 2K HE, you can, of course, bring in more 50 cals and B phase. I mean, I wouldn't do that. These are always really strong, for me personally at least. There's also the M8 Scott. That is an option if you want a more aggressive HE unit, but I'm not 100% sure why you would bring this over the M4s. Price, of course, I guess is a good argument. Uh, you can get almost three of these for the price of one M4. But 2K is so much better than 1500 meter range, so uh, I would... I would shy away from that. Now, you could certainly fit it. There's a one more two-point slot. You just have to take away something else. Income, I mean, uh, excuse me, supply and a commander. If you don't want a commander, you can take another 50 cal or the, the M8. You know, if you're not in the mood for extra veterancy, if you're not one of those kind of people who likes the extra vet, that is certainly plausible. AT tab, also really good. I mean, you get some great units here. You got the 57 mil. Nothing impressive, nothing crazy about this. It gets the job done. It can certainly get a lot of kills if used well. Uh, fires very fast and has a, a solid penetration. Not anything crazy, but very solid. Good accuracy. You know, the real highlight of this tab right here is the M5 gun. They get them with the fabulous American APCR shells that fire at 2,000 meter range and basically always get a crit. Um, even the regular shell is that it's basically the sem same gun as the M4 A176. So definitely nothing wrong with that. And you get a solid HE shell. It's not anything crazy. Oh, excuse me. 
it's late again. It's not anything crazy, but, uh, you know, it's got it, and that's great. And you get two cards of these, load up. I would definitely load up at 65 points. They're very cost efficient. And then you get the M10s, which are phenomenal, of course, because once again, they have that APCR shell. Uh, they can do some great work. I'm only bringing one card because the M5s kind of serve the same purpose. And yeah, I mean, I could definitely see myself fighting, arguing myself into another card of M10s. No bazookas because your infantry are carrying around a lot of bazookas. That's why I'm not bringing them. I wouldn't fault anyone for having them, but they're kind of unnecessary, especially if you take the armored rifles in A instead of like the engineers, then you really have, uh, you really have bazookas for days then. So these are pretty unnecessary. Anti-air, not much to choose from here. You have the M15, which is a 37 mil, which is meh. Yeah, very meh. Not anything super great. It's not bad, but it's very meh. Uh, M16, not good. Uh, it's much better after the 50 cal buff, but it's still pretty useless. Uh, I would still never suggest taking this over the other options. And you get one card of bow Bofors, 40 mils. Uh, these are very good. So I bring these in beads with the vet. Uh, the, of course the M15s are mobile, so they should be able to survive much longer. So starting these in a phase makes a lot more sense than putting the Bofors in a phase. That's why it's set up that way. Already tab. Very good. You get some really good options here. And I will say the, the anti-air tab is very limited. It's expensive and limited, making it tough. This is definitely one of the weaknesses of the deck. Uh, the already tab. Very, very good. You get the 81 of mortars and the half tracks. You, I, I don't see many people not take these. They're very good. A uh, very strong unit overall. Uh, 60 mil mortar. It's definitely a good option, but I don't think it really fits in this deck. Uh, you're, you're very mobile, so these guys don't stay in position long enough. Like They're not firing at things consistently close enough. Um, RD leader. Take it or leave it. I'm taking the commander, so I'm bringing the RD leader to try to pump up my infantry a little bit more. Uh, not really for the RD leaderingness, but for the normal leaderingness. Uh, you can get the M7 105s. It's not a bad choice if you want lots of self propelled artillery. Uh, we did the 81. You do have the M12 GMC, which is basically the same as this long tom, but it has almost no ammo. See, it only has 10 rounds. It's pretty rough. It runs out really fast. So I would be careful about using this. You're going to be very ammo hungry using this unit. Uh, but it, it, it's got the same availability as a normal long time. I've decided here to take the long time instead. Um, I would not fault anyone though for taking the GMC instead of this. They serve exactly the same role at the end of the day. Uh, just a slightly different cost and all those kind of things. Then you have the Calliope. I don't see any reason to use this. It's not very strong. Uh, the, the, the rockets don't have enough damage on them and the spread is a bit too wide for this to really be effective. It's essentially a pinning-ish off-map sort of kind of uh, is what that is. And then you have the actual off-map of the deck. You know, maybe you should be taking this, I guess. It's it's a very good off-map at 155 millimeters. Uh, it comes down with a, a pretty large number of shells. It, it, it is strong, but um, I don't do off-map, so, you know, that's why you don't see it. Uh, that's why you don't see it here. I would much prefer just a long tom firing the whole time. And then finally, the air tab. Limited, but very good for what it is. Uh, you could take the L4s. They're little 10-point recon planes. They are dirt cheap. They do die to everything, though. I'm taking the F6 instead. This is sort of my fighter. Uh, nice and zippy. Bad resilience. Be careful with that. Uh, but a good recon plane overall. Then in a phase P51 with the lighter kilogram, two kilogram, 113 kilogram bomb loadout, it's still a devastating bomber. Like this will easily kill any support weapon. Uh, it it uh, with a direct hit and the infantry not falling back, this can definitely kill a full infantry squad even as well. Uh, this is a very good plane. It's very very fast at 645 kilometers an hour. It is bad resilience though. They do die. Like don't think that these things are indestructible. They 100% are not. I do plan on using this as my fight as fighters though too. So like all of these units kind of just flexibly being the fighters. Um, I mean, if you felt like you needed a dedicated fighter, the P51. The problem is the P51 fighter is essentially the same thing, just faster. So it it it's not like worth spending 120 points because the P51 fighter will die just as fast as the p51 bomber so it's one of those things it's hard to justify bringing a fighter in, especially when you have this these few tabs to start uh then we, i have the p51 big bomber this thing is absolutely will just level anything that it drops bombs on it's very very good it's it drops them really tight you can kill tanks with this uh relatively consistently uh this is a very very good bomber but it is 150 points it is very important to note that these p51s as good as they are 
are not cheap at all, and they will take a big chunk out of your income. Finally, what didn't we take here? The L4s, of course, like I mentioned, the Marauders. Marauders are okay, but this this bomb loadout is pretty awful here for this Marauder, at least. Uh, like I explained why we're not taking a fighter. This B26, though, much better. A pretty good bomb loadout. Uh, the problem is the availability is not very high. Uh, it's not the fastest plane. It's definitely for a heavy bomber. It's relatively fast, but it's not the fastest. It has a very good resilience. But I just feel like getting a P51 just oftentimes is better than the Marauder in this division, at least, because you're pushing really hard and the opponents often on the back foot. Uh, the P51 is a little more high. They don't have as many points to call in AA or something like that. So this is how I have third U.S. armor built. Again, there's a lot of flexibility here. You can push to have some more M10s. You can definitely mix up this RD tab a lot. Uh, you can even go a few less tanks. Like you could probably survive without the M4A ones and A phase. That frees up two points, allows you to get another support thing if you want. You could, you could get more stewards. Again, you could swap out the M8 for more stewards. You could get more RD with the two points as well if you wanted that instead. You can get more 50 cals. All those good things. I mean, there's a lot of options here uh, for changing this up, but I think it's a pretty solid build for your average Joe trying to play this deck in quick play. And if you guys enjoyed this, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and consider supporting over on Patreon. Thank you to everyone who has or is currently supporting me on Patreon. It really means a lot. Thanks a bunch, guys, and have a fantastic day.